Hey everybody, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and welcome to this next lesson in my Wanna Switch tutorial series, taking a look at making the switch from Final Cut Pro or even Premiere Pro to Avid Media Composer, or for all of you editors out there who are new to the nonlinear industry, a look at getting started with Avid Media Composer. Now, in this lesson, we're gonna take a look at probably the other most important thing that you're gonna to need to do inside of a nonlinear editing application, besides obviously capture and editing, and that is outputting. And I'm gonna show you two types of outputting. One, I'm gonna show you how to output to tape. And then I'm gonna show you how you're gonna export files so that you can send them to a DVD creation program, a web compression program, or even to Adobe's After Effects. Okay, now I gotta remind you before we get started that if you haven't downloaded the 30-day free trial of Avid's Media Composer, you can simply head on over to Avid's website and click on the link right here and download it. Again, a 30-day free demo of Avid's Media Composer. Okay, so I'm just gonna hide Firefox and let's Command Tab into Avid's Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so you can see that we're pretty much right at where we left off in the last tutorial. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit the home key here to send my time bar back to the start of my sequence. And I'm gonna navigate up to output and I'm simply gonna select digital cut. Digital cut is the way that we're gonna lay this content back to tape. So once I select digital cut, the digital cut tool is gonna to appear and you're gonna notice that it looks very similar to the capture tool. Now, a few things in here that you need to be aware of. First of all, you're gonna to need to decide what tracks you wanna output. Now you can see that Media Composer knows that I'm outputting to an IEEE 1394 FireWire device. Now, obviously what's gonna happen is when I crash record in, it's gonna turn all of the channels on and over here you can see that I have the option to export video and audio. And in this case, because I only have two audio channels in my timeline, that's what I have access to. Now, you're gonna see that my video track is set to video two which is something that's very important to keep in mind. Because in many cases, what you're gonna to wanna to make sure of is that when you're outputting, you're outputting all of your tracks. So I can come down and say, okay, well let's do video track three. Now that doesn't mean it's only gonna output video track three, it means it's gonna output from video track three all of the way down through all of the video tracks. So if you had 15 video tracks, you're gonna have the option to go in and output to tape whatever channels you want. Great thing is, if you happen to have things on video three that you don't wanna output and you only wanna output from video track two down, no problem. Let's just select video track two and we can only output what's on track two and track one as well as the audio have a few buttons that we're gonna to need to deal with. And the main one is obviously the button that we're gonna to press to play the digital cut, meaning this is what we're gonna to click to start our sequence outputting to tape. Now, obviously again, much like in the capture tool, we have a little window that's gonna tell us when it starts flashing red that it's outputting to tape. And you're gonna notice right next to that, we have the button to stop the digital cut. Now, escape is another shortcut that you're gonna be able to use to stop your tape from digital cutting. Next over here, you see we have a yellow button that obviously looks very similar to the red one, and in this case, that's used to preview your digital cut before you do it. Because I'm working in DVC Pro HD 720p 2398, that is the output mode that is set to output. Okay, so next I have the option of exporting the entire sequence, or if I deselect that, what's gonna happen is Media Composer is only gonna export the range that I have selected by my in and out points. You can see next, Media Composer, if I have it checked, will stop on drop frames, and I can also check to have the LTC out during the pre-roll. To be perfectly honest, I really never have that selected, but you know what, it's great to have it as an option. Next, I have the option to add black to tail, because as you'll notice, we don't have a generator that we can put in something like a slug inside of Final Cut Pro to give us black at the end of our timeline. We end up having to add a frame of video or audio in, and then adding filler in like that, but guess what? You don't need to worry about it because you can simply add black at the tail when you're outputting. As well, we have the option of deck control, whether it's remote or local. And you'll see now that we have a few options as far as what we're gonna output. Now, are we gonna output the sequence time? Are we gonna output the record deck time? Are we going to mark an in time? Now that means basically by selecting that, I can come in here and enter a value, let's just say, oh, 10 minutes. And what Media Composer is gonna do is queue itself up and it's gonna start the edit at that point right there. And you'll see next that I have the option to ignore time altogether. Now I'm just gonna come back up to the sequence time and if I was ready to output, because you'll see the only option that I have to output is to crash record because it knows I'm going into a DV source, I could simply come up here and hit digital cut. Now, something that's important to keep in mind is that depending on your configuration, this crash record option is going to change. Now, next, we can add a custom pre-roll of however much time we want. The standard pre-roll is always set to five seconds. 
And last but certainly not least, we can add a DV offset if we wanted to. Now you'll see, much like in the capture tool, we do have complete control over the deck. So I can grab control of the deck just like this. And you'll probably hear it queuing up in the background here. I can rewind my tape. I can fast forward my tape. I can eject. I can do whatever I need to right here from within the digital cut tool. Now that's how you're going to take something and you're going to export it to tape. But you know what? In most cases these days, we don't do a lot of outputting to tape. In most cases, we output to a DVD or to a file that we're going to take and we're going to convert to something for the web, you know, for a DVD, who knows what we're going to use it for. But in most cases, file-based transfers is how you're going to go. So let's talk about exporting from Avid's Media Composer. Okay, so let's just get our timeline ready to export. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove the in and out points by hitting G on the keyboard. And I'm just going to come back to the beginning of the sequence. Now I'm just going to navigate back over here to my sequences bin. And I'm going to make sure that I have the want to switch sequence selected. And I'm simply going to right click and I can come down to export right here. Or what I can do is simply navigate up to file and come down to export. Now, much like with bin views and timeline views, you can have many different export settings that you can easily switch back and forth to. You'll see that I have a couple in here, one for Apple ProRes HQ, one for ProRes 1080i, one for ProRes 422. You'll see that you can get in very quickly and very easily and create these templates. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to leave that as untitled and I'm going to click on options. Now, inside of options, what I'm going to want to do is navigate up to export as, and you'll see here in the drop down that I have a bunch of choices from AAF to AFE, QuickTime Reference, HDV, DV Stream, QuickTime Movie, Audio, Graphic, Avid Log Exchange, and Tab Delimited. Now, in most cases, what you're going to be doing is exporting a QuickTime Movie. So let's just select QuickTime Movie, and you'll see that the very first option I have is do I want to export this as same as source? Now, if I wanted to export it using the Avid Codex, I can do that. But I also have the flexibility of coming in and doing a custom export where I can come into my format options. Again, this looks very familiar to anyone who's familiar with QuickTime. And I have the choice of any one of these possible codecs to export from Avid's Media Composer. But in most cases, what you're going to be doing, I'm just going to cancel out of this, is saying same as source. Next, obviously, you have the choice of video and audio, video only or audio only. And obviously, you'll alter this depending on your needs. Again, you can choose your color levels, RGB or 601 slash 709. You can create a preview if you want. And then at the bottom, you have the option of the display aspect ratio. In this case, I have the option of DV, 4x3, or 16x9. Now, one thing I also want to point out is that if we come right back to the top here, you're going to see that we have a couple of options. The first one I have is Use Enabled Tracks, which is selected right now. And what that means is that right down here, you'll see that I have video 3, 2, 1 and audios 1 and 2 selected. Well, obviously, it's going to export the enabled tracks, which right now is all of them. And if I had an in and out point marked in my sequence and I wanted to use that, I can also simply select use marks. In most cases, I leave that on because I like to always get in and be very specific about what I want to export. If I want to export the entire sequence, I'll just simply mark an in and out point at the start and at the end. Now what I can do is simply say save as and I'm going to call this want to switch. And now I have this setting and I'm just going to say cancel and I'm going to say cancel again. I have this setting saved over here in my settings right there want to switch. Now I can easily switch between these export settings by simply clicking on them here. And what's going to happen is, is that let's just select uncompressed 8 bit. If I right click and say export that's going to be the default that's set to export right there. Now, obviously, export time is going to vary based on the length of your composition and the complexity of your effects. I'm just going to say cancel here because by the magic of my recording, I already exported a file here to the desktop because I wanted to explain something that's very important. And that is the Avid codec. Now, because you're working in Media Composer and because you installed Media Composer on your machine, you obviously have access to the Avid codec. And the other programs on your system, such as After Effects, have access to that codec as well. The only problem is, is that outside of your computer, people might not have access to the Avid codec. But that doesn't mean that they can't download those codecs. And I know that I'm using the Avid codec because if I double click on this file just like that, and I navigate up to Window in QuickTime and I say Show Movie Inspector, you'll see right here that I'm using the Avid DV100 codec 1280 by 720 2398 if you want to download the Avid codec for you to use, you know, maybe you have a separate graphics machine that you don't have Media Composer installed onto, or if you want to give it to one of your clients, if you head on over to Twitter at KP McAuliffe, look for a tweet posted on August the 12th of 2011 
I'm going to put a link on Twitter to those codecs. So you can just head on over to Twitter or better yet, follow me on Twitter and you'll get all of these updates, including this link to the Avid Codex right from Avid's website. Download them, install them on your machine. And even if you don't have Media Composer installed, you can still view and work with the Avid Codec in your projects. Okay, now this was only a very brief look at outputting. We're going to get more in-depth into the exporting element of outputting in later tutorials, but I wanted to show this to you because this completes the round trip. We took a look at capturing, we took a look at project organization and bin organization, we took a look at editing, we took a look at effects and titling, and finally we took a look at outputting. So there is your round trip, a very basic look at Avid's Media Composer. Like I said, many more tutorials to come, but this is good enough to get you started. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, please feel free to send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.